There's no free lunch. And what's going on, Steve, is it's crony capitalism all the way down. What happens is you have a $250,000 maximum that FDIC usually applies as the amount that's actually insured. What they're doing here is they're changing the rules after the fact to favor Silicon Valley Bank. And what does that do is it creates these incentives in the future, Steve, for banks to take more risk, for depositors, especially large depositors at smaller banks to just throw more money at those banks because you know the government's going to be there to backstop it. I know they're not calling it a bailout, but the, but the concept is really just the same. It's a way in which they've come in to rescue a bank that had horrific risk management controls. And they're also effectively, though, bailing out the depositors here. They're not using the word bailout, but the depositors who took is that, the when risk you say of deposit, doing business. That's the customers, right? The that's people right. who, who that's have right. accounts with them. Yeah. That's right. And, but those customers, in many cases, are tech startups, as you said. But a lot mm -hmm. of those tech startups did uh, entered a banking relationship with Silicon Valley because they had special business relationships with, with Silicon Valley Bank as well, including venture right. debt terms, et cetera. And so the public doesn't participate in the upside of that, but it's a shame to now see the U.S. government come in and rewrite the rules to save them when things go badly.